What's up everybody, my name is Scott Paddock and today I'm gonna to show you a practice hack that will make learning difficult music a whole lot easier. As musicians, we have all been in the same situation and that is when you're playing through a piece of music and then suddenly out of nowhere, you hit this phrase, it is really, really difficult. So in this tutorial, I am gonna give you several strategies for working through that phrase and making it a whole lot easier to learn. Before we get started with the tutorial, if you enjoy my content, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and click that bell for notifications. For me to show you this hack, the very first thing that we need is some difficult music. So I chose a phrase from the Charlie Parker solo in the tune Yardbird Suite. And this is what it sounds like. Now, if you just look at this phrase without even trying to play it, you can see that there is a whole lot of stuff going on. You have a lot of 16th notes, you have some triplets, you just have a lot of stuff going on in these five measures. So the very first strategy is very, very, very simple, and that is slow it down. Now, you're gonna to wanna to slow it down more than you would think. You wanna slow it way down so that you can just work your way through the music. So this is me slowing this phrase down. If you can play it at a slower tempo, then that is awesome. Then you wanna keep playing it at that slower tempo and as it becomes more comfortable, you're gonna bump that tempo up until you hit the target tempo. However, oftentimes slowing it down is not gonna be enough. So the next step is you're gonna analyze the music and try and figure out what's going on. To do this, you're definitely gonna want a pencil so that you can write in your music. Now, there are all different kinds of reasons that hard music is difficult, and oftentimes it is finding the beat. So if you're having a hard time finding where the beats are landing, mark in the beats on your music. That will help organize it a lot easier if you can see it as you're playing through the music. The second thing you can do is just analyze what's going on in the music. Now, even if you don't know advanced music theory, you can look at it and come up with some basic stuff that is gonna help you a lot. For example, if we look at these first three notes, you can see that you have chromatic 16th notes landing on the A. From there, you jump down a larger interval to the E and then jump up to the G. So looking at things like that, like the movement of the notes, that's gonna help a lot. So whether you're doing scale-wise motion, chromatic motion, or you're jumping around in intervals like a third, a fourth, or a fifth. So if you find a certain part of the phrase really difficult, if you can figure out what's going on in the music, like the motion of the notes, or the intervals, or where the beat is gonna land, that is gonna make your life a lot easier. And when you get closer to that phrase when you're playing the song, you're gonna be able to organize what's going on before you get there. So the first step is slow it down. The second step is analyze it. The third step is my favorite step and something that I say all the time, and that is break it down break it down. That is the easiest way to learn pretty much anything that you want to learn, especially when it comes to music. So when I say break it down, I mean we're gonna break it down into smaller pieces, and then when we get that done, we're gonna put it all back together. So you could break it down into a measure, or a beat, or two beats, or even a half a beat. It just depends on what's going on. So we're gonna break this phrase down, and I'm gonna show you step by step exactly how I would do it. So we start off with two 16th notes that land on that A. Here is a secret that is gonna make your life a whole lot easier. And that is when you have fast notes, fast notes like 16th notes or triplets or definitely 32nd notes, they are never the target note. They are never the main thing. They are always going somewhere. They'll always belong to something else. So your 16th notes or your triplets are always gonna be going towards a goal note or a target note. So if you realize that, it's gonna make playing those 16th notes a whole lot easier. So if we look at this first phrase, you can see that on the end of three, we have a B, B flat, and an A. So the B and the B flat belong to the A. That's gonna make your counting a lot easier if you know that the A is on the beat and that's the target note and the B and the B flat belong to it. 
Then if you look at the second measure, you can see that we have that G and then two sixteenth notes. So those two sixteenth notes belong to something. It's either going to be the F sharp or the F. Now, when I look at this, I can see that it is a written out turn. So a turn meaning you're playing the note, you go above the note or below the note, and you go back to the note. That's just a written out turn. So that's going to make it a lot easier if you can recognize a written out turn. So now you just have to figure out if those 16th notes belong to the F sharp or the F. You can hear that F comes in on the end of the beat. It's a stronger note and it's a longer note. So that belongs to the F. So the G turn goes through the F sharp and lands on the F. Now listen to it from the beginning and listen to how those 16th notes belong to the gold notes after it. That makes it a whole lot easier than if you just look at these as individual notes. Now from there, you just have some eighth notes, so it's a little bit easier. If you'd like to get a whole lot better at playing the saxophone, then I would like to invite you to come check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I take the guesswork out of what to practice, how to practice, and what to practice next, and give you a really clear step-by-step -step pathway to follow. So whether you're just starting out or you wanna learn jazz style, improvisation, overtones. If you want to learn Charlie Parker transcriptions, I do a lot of those in the school. Pretty much anything you want to learn on the saxophone, I've got you covered in the sax school. So if you'd like to come check me out, I'll put a link in the video description below. Then we have some more 16th notes, and we have already talked about when you have 16th notes, they're almost always going to belong to a goal note. So the goal note for this is going to be the C sharp. That is going to be what I call the land note. So you have this turn where you have fast notes and you have to land on a note. You're gonna land on the C sharp. So almost think about it as if you're running and you're jumping in the air and then you land. So you're gonna land on this C sharp. Can you hear how important that C sharp is? Because it is the land note. Now that is another written out turn. So again, if you can recognize the written out turns, it's gonna make reading difficult rhythms a whole lot easier. Now take a listen from the beginning. When I play this first part of the phrase, I definitely hear something going on. I'm gonna play it again, and I want you to listen and see if you can hear some type of motif or pattern or something that is going on that connects all of this. What I hear is a walk down. So a walk down is when you have notes, sometimes it's in the scale, sometimes it's chromatically, where the important notes, the goal notes, are work walking down. So this starts off with a B, B flat, A. That A is an important note, then you go down to the E and jump to the G. So listen to the A going to the G. So the B, B flat, going to the A, walking down to the G. From there, we hit the F sharp and the F. Do you hear that? We have the A, the G, the F sharp, and the F all working down. From the F, we go to the D, that's the next part of the walk down. Then after the turn and the third measure, we land on that C sharp, that's the last part of the walk down. and that turns it around into something else. Take a listen one more time and listen for the walk down. So if you can pick up on things like that that are going on in the music, it's gonna make learning it a whole lot easier. Now from there, we have some intervals. And then we hit a triplet. Again, when we have faster notes, those faster notes are usually gonna to belong to something, and this triplet belongs to the G. Then we hit the G, and then we have some more 16th notes, and this is another turn that lands on the F sharp. So the A, G, it belongs to the F sharp. Then in the last measure, we have another difficult rhythm, which is another written out turn. So you have that 16th note triplet, A, B, A, down to the F sharp, jump up to the C sharp. 
So I think about the C sharp being the goal note, but because you're jumping down to that lower uh, interval, the F sharp, you're definitely gonna hit that a little bit, but the C sharp is your main note. So if you analyze the music like that and figure out how the notes belong to each other, it's gonna make it a whole lot easier to play. So now let's talk a little bit more about breaking it down. So when I break things down, I usually do it in sections that make sense. So I'm gonna start at the beginning and go to the F natural. To me, that makes a lot of sense. Now say I was having a hard time with the turn in measure two. I could just skip those 16th notes. and get used to the way these notes are landing. And when I get really comfortable with that, then throw the 16th notes back in. Now there is another major, major, major hack that you need to know when it comes to reading rhythms. They are almost always grouped in beats. They are almost always grouped in beats. So if you look at measure two, you can see that the G, A, G are all grouped into one beat. Then you have the F-sharp F, which is grouped into one beat. And then you have the tied F, the D, the C, and the A. Now that is two beats, but oftentimes when you have four eighth notes in a row, they are gonna beam them so that, they are, so that they all belong in one grouping, just because it is a whole lot easier to read the music like that. So if you look at the beaming of the note, oftentimes that's gonna tell you where the beats land. All right, let's keep breaking this down. So I would start on the D after the F. I would go that far. That sounds pretty natural to me. Once I got that second part down, I would start at the beginning and go that far. Then I would start on the C sharp. I would play that a couple times until it felt really comfortable, and then I would go back to the beginning again. Then I would play the last measure. So I'm breaking this phrase down into smaller parts to make it a whole lot easier to digest. Then of course I go back to the beginning and play the whole thing. When you start breaking music down like this, there are two things that you're gonna realize very quickly. The first is, it's a whole lot easier when you break it down because you can see how everything goes together. The second thing is, usually it's not the whole phrase that is difficult. There's usually one or two little things in there that are making it really difficult. So if you can figure out what that is and break down that little section, then you're not gonna have to practice the whole song or even the whole phrase. You can figure out that beat or two beats or one measure that, are tri that, that is tripping you up and practice that a lot and then put it back into your phrase. So when it comes to learning difficult music, the first thing you wanna do is slow it down. The second thing you wanna do is analyze it. The third thing you wanna do is break it down. And then the last thing you need to do is put it all back together. If you follow those four steps, you will be crushing any music that you're working on in no time at all. Thanks for watching this video, and if you'd like to learn a whole lot more saxophone tips and tricks, come hang out with me at the Scott Paddock Sax School.